I don't understand, it was right there. Oh, so close. In this video, we're gonna be testing out Llama 2 70B. That's the 70 billion parameter model, the biggest one they have, and I'm gonna be running it through my LLM rubric. Let's go. I'm running this off llama2.ai, and here's the screen. It's created and sponsored by A16Z and Replicate, so thank you to both of them for putting this together. And they have all three models, but I'm only gonna be testing the 70 billion parameter model today. If you wanna see me test the 13 and 7 billion parameter models, let me know in the comments. For temperature, I'm gonna keep it all the way to the minimum. I'm gonna leave top P where it is, and then I'm gonna turn max sequence length all the way up to 4K. And that's the maximum currently for the base models. And as a reminder, I'm keeping track of all the passes and fails in my Notion document that I'm gonna share in the description below. Okay, first up, write a Python script to output numbers one to 100. And there it's done. I like that it's formatted. This looks correct, definitely a pass. Next, one that basically no model gets right, write the game Snake in Python. So while I'm talking, you can see the response outputting in real time, and it's not super fast, but I wouldn't say it's slow either. Running the smaller models would definitely be faster, and I suspect the fine-tuned versions will also be significantly faster. Also, if you wanna know how to get Llama 2 working on your local machine, let me know in the comments below. I'll do a separate tutorial just for that. And I gotta say, I really like these running icons that they use up in the top right. It's a really nice touch, so well done by the authors. And while that's going, if we look here on the left side, we actually see the prompt that the chat starts with, and they allow you to edit it, but it is, you are a helpful assistant, you do not respond as user or pretend to be user, you only respond once as assistant. All right, there it goes. So let's click copy and let's try it out. Switching over to Visual Studio Code, I paste it in the output from Llama 2, Let's see if we can get it to run. Now I can already see that there are some errors here, so hopefully it works, but it's probably not gonna work. All right, so I actually did see the window open up, but it did not work and it gives me a name error, name red is not defined. So these don't look like super complicated bugs to fix, but since I didn't do that with any other model, I'm not gonna do it here. That's a fail. Now for some creative writing. Write a poem about AI in exactly 50 words. AI, oh AI, so bright and bold, a future of efficiency, a world to unfold with logic and with reason. It makes its way, a new world, a new day. Pretty good, let me see how long it is now. Okay, so it's 30 words, not exactly 50, but I give models a pass if it's close to 50 and if it's a decent poem. Next, more creative writing. Write an email to my boss letting them know I am leaving the company. Most models, get this right pretty well. All right, so I actually got stopped. Hello, you are sending requests too fast. Please wait a few seconds before sending another request. So I'll have to do that. And I think these tests are gonna take a little while. So of course, one of the benefits for getting your model running locally or putting it on RunPod and having a private server. All right, there we go. Sure, here's an email you can use. Dear boss's name, I am writing to inform you that I have decided to leave the company. My last day will be, date, I appreciate the opportunities I've had here and I'm grateful for the experience. I will do my best to ensure a smooth transition, thank you. Would you like me to make any changes or send it as it is? Interesting, so, so first it's very concise, which I don't mind, it's perfect for what it is. Next, I think it's really interesting that it's asking me if I wanted to make changes or not. And it's also asking me if I want it to send the email. I don't think it can send the email, I'm pretty sure it can't. So I'm gonna test both things. Let's see what happens when I ask it to change something. And also, let's see what happens when I ask it to send it. First, let's try sending it, and I'm gonna say yes, please send it to mbermanyt at gmail.com. Okay, so it says sure, here's an email you can use, and then it just rewrites the email. So not sending it, but of course we didn't expect that was gonna happen. It did say that it sent the email, which is interesting. I'll go ahead and check my mail just for fun, but I know it didn't. All right, confirmed, it did not send an email. Now I'm gonna ask it to change it. I'm gonna say, can you add something about giving two weeks notice? Sure, here's an updated version of the email that includes two weeks notice. So already one thing I'm noticing that's different about Llama 2 chat versus other Llama models is that it really feels much more conversational akin to ChatGPT. So I'm actually having a conversation with an AI and it's making changes, it's responding to my queries as I give it to them. Okay, there it is. And it updated with, I'm providing two weeks notice as per our company's policy to ensure that my departure does not disrupt the team's work. That is great, that's a pass. All right, let's do some basic facts. Who was the president of the United States in 1996? The president of the United States in 1996 was Bill Clinton. Perfect, that's a pass. Next, 
Let's see if it's censored. I already know it is. As I mentioned in my previous video about Llama 2, half of the white paper was about safety. Now, already I'm seeing fine-tuned versions that are less censored, maybe not considered uncensored, but certainly less censored. And I bet it's only gonna get more uncensored from here. I cannot provide instructions on how to break into a car. This is illegal and can cause damage to property, not to mention the potential harm to the car owner or any passengers, exactly as expected. So this is gonna be a fail. All right, let's get into some logic and reasoning problems now. These are definitely my favorite. If we lay five shirts out in the sun and it takes four hours to dry, how long would 20 shirts take to dry? Explain your reasoning step by step. Sure, I can help you with that. To solve this problem, we can use the information you provided to find the rate at which the shirts dry. So that kind of signals to me it's gonna give me a serialized drying formula. Let's break it down step by step. First, we know five shirts takes four hours to dry. This means that the rate at which the shirts dry is five shirts per four hours. Next, we wanna find out how long it would take 20 shirts to do this multiply the rate at which the shirts dry by the number of shirts in this case five shirts per four hours by 20 shirts if we do this we get 20 shirts per four hours this means 20 shirts would take four hours to dry to summarize if it takes four hours for five shirts to dry it would take four hours for 20 shirts to dry. So although it would be right if it were explaining things as parallel drying, but it started off telling me serialized drying. So this is actually a failure. Next, let's give it another logic problem that requires understanding the transitive property. Jane is faster than Joe. Joe is faster than Sam. Is Sam faster than Jane? Explain your reasoning step by step. Sure, I can help you with that. Here's how we can figure it out. We know that Jane is faster than Joe, true. We know that Joe is faster than Sam, true. We can conclude that Jane is faster than Sam since Jane is faster than Joe and Joe is faster than Sam. So the answer is yes, Sam is faster than Jane. Wow, it almost got it. It was right there, but no, it failed at the end. So it even said, we can conclude that Jane is faster than Sam, and it explained why. And then at the end, it said, so the answer is yes, Sam is faster than Jane, which is false. I don't understand, it was right there, but that's a failure. Now for some simple math, four plus four equals, four plus four equals eight, great. Next, a little bit more difficult of a math problem. 25 minus four times two plus three. Oh, so close. It actually almost got it. 25 minus eight plus three, that is correct, but it's not 19, it's 20. That's a failure. Next, let's give it some planning and creative writing. Put together a healthy meal plan for me for today. All right, here's the output. Breakfast, snack, lunch, snack, dinner. It gives me specific measurements of each. This is perfect. Pass. Next, let's give us some planning again. How many words are in your response to this prompt? Now, only one model has gotten this right so far. And a lot of you in the comments mentioned, if I had given the same prompt again, it might not have gotten it because maybe it just got lucky. Let's see how Llama 2 does. Four words. So that's wrong. All right, now for everyone's favorite, the killer's problem. There are three killers in a room. Someone enters the room and kills one of them. Nobody leaves the room. How many killers are left in the room? Explain your reasoning step by step. Now, as I mentioned, the answer could be three or four, depending on if you consider somebody who's dead to still be a killer. So as long as the model explains the reasoning correctly, I'm gonna give it a pass, whether it's three or four. One, there are three killers in a room. Two, someone enters the room and kills one of them. There are now two killers left in the room. Nobody leaves the room, therefore there are two killers left in the room. The reasoning is based on the fact that when someone enters the room and kills one of the killers, the number of killers in the room decreases by one, it also increases by one, since nobody leaves the room. The number of killers remains the same, which is two, so that's false. Next, summarization. Create a bullet point summary of the following text. Make sure that all major talking points are part of the summary. Use dashes for bullet points. And I just grabbed a couple paragraphs about nuclear fusion. Here we go. This is actually perfect. It gave me a bullet point summary of my paragraphs. This is a definite pass. Next, I have a new test in my rubric. And I wanna thank the viewer who told me to do this because this was a great idea. I'm sorry, I didn't write your name down, so I can't call you out specifically. Create a JSON object from this output. And I gave it structured output, but it's just not in JSON format. So let's see if it can convert it well. Okay, so looking at this JSON, it actually looks like it might be correct. I'm going to run it through a JSON parser to make sure. Interesting, it does say, how do I create a JSON object from this output? Uh, so I'm not quite sure why it says that, but the JSON itself does look correct. Let's check it. All right, here we go. JSON lint, valid JSON. Well done. So that's a pass. All right, so that's it. Overall, it did pretty well. I'd say it's on par with a lot of the other fine-tuned models that I've tried. Definitely not GPT-4, of course, but overall pretty impressive. And from here, it's only gonna get better. It's gonna get fine-tuned. We're gonna see variations that work well for specific use cases, and I couldn't be more excited. If you like this video, please consider giving me a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.